Welcome to the Film Junket Podcast. What's happening, film nerds? Dave the Film Junkie here. Welcome to the Film Junket. Junket. Podcast. You get it, right? Yeah, try to do a little play on something there. How the fuck are you? Yes, I know. I should be doing these a lot more often, and I suck for not doing them because... Well, here's, here's the thing, guys. I'm a busy person. I'm also a lazy person, okay? It's... It, <laughs> It's, it's very interesting. When I get in a lazy mode, oh, I get in a lazy mode. Um, two weekends ago, I literally just said, fuck everything. I'm just going to just not do anything for a whole weekend. Just watch movies, catch up on shows. That's all I'm doing. I'm not going to do anything else. Just not. And I didn't. I ate junk food. I, I uh, drank. I uh, <clears throat> possibly, you know, um, you know, just relax. Stuff to relax. <laughs> And uh, it was nice, but it did put me way behind because things had, you know, certain things came about and then I had to play catch up all throughout the week. I mean, I'm still playing catch up. I think I finally did catch up and I wanted to do a podcast last week. That didn't happen, you know, because certain things happen and then, you know, trying to do my daily videos that takes forever. Sometimes, you know, sometimes when I think, oh, yeah, it'll just be easy. I got this video, that video, and that video. And then all of a sudden I get, you know, oh, I got to add this, got to add that. And and it just, yeah, just doesn't happen because, you know, this takes at least an hour of my time. And usually I do it late at night. And if I get certain, not late at night, but at night, if it gets past a certain time, I'm like, I can't because I got, you know, I got to get ready for bed. I I work early in the morning. It's speaking of work, man. I swear, reality, guys, reality in the uh, film junkies world, the reality of Dave, of Dave Pena here, is, uh, I swear, it seems like every three or four months, there's like a drastic change that happens. It really is. There's like a weird change, you know, it just seems like for like the past, since 2012, yeah, the Mayans, they, they knew something. Because ever since, ever since the end of 2012, shit's just been weird. I mean, people have gone nuts. Obviously, I mean, just luck. Yeah, I found out today that teenagers are snorting condoms. That's right. The new Tide Pod challenge is snorting condoms. What the fuck? And uh, we have teenagers advocating for policy. That's pretty awesome. Anyways, um, it's just what <laughs> this country, I swear. I love this country to death, but... Man, I'll get into that in a bit. Anyways, um, yeah, it just seems like things always change. Like when um, when I was uh, back in 2012 is when I took a real big drastic change in my life. Uh, I quit my cable job that I did for seven years. That's right. I was a cable guy for those of you that didn't know. I've talked about it before, but uh, I was a cable guy for seven years. And, you know, that was just pretty much my job. And it was a, it was a nice little gig. It wasn't bad. You know, it wasn't hard. I mean, it it sucked a little bit, but, you know, it's whatever. It was just a decent, steady job. And, and, um, you know, you get that seven-year itch, that seven-year burnout, and that's exactly what I had. And I quit, and I worked for my uncle's company, which was way worse. Horrible. It's construction. Way more construction than I thought it was going to be, and uh, it only lasted two months. And then that just set me down a path to pretty much where I am now with uh, designing it's not this not, not like web design or graphic design. It's just designing plans for like uh, telecom companies, which is not that bad either. But I'm an antsy dude. I like to move around, and it's hard for me to stick, you know, to stay inside an office. And I and honestly, I don't know how I've lasted having office jobs because I went from one company to another company to yet another company. But with this current company that I'm win uh, that I'm with. Um, just to basically save, I guess, uh, money and stuff like that. I got trained to do field work as well as office drafting work. 
So I got my own truck, which is awesome because, you know, I do have to commute to work and that sucks putting all that on your car and paying for gas. By the way, tonight's drink is uh, Captain Morgan. Every time I take a sip, my left leg goes up. <sighs> Anyways, so, um, yeah, so I was doing that and then finally I full on did that when the last field guy quit back in the, at the end of November and for like three months... My regular job was awesome. It was fucking awesome, guys. Like, it was just, I, I was halfway in the office, half in, in the field. My boss is a cool guy. He, like, doesn't, like, go, where you at? Where you at? Or this, that, and this. There was times where he's like, yeah, just just uh, deliver this on your way out. And sometimes i get out of work early, beat the traffic. You know, just a lot of things. And it was great. It was absolutely great. I was enjoying it. I even, like like I, I've told you guys before, business trips up to Portland. That was something new I never experienced, which was great. But now things have changed again because my boss quit. <laughs> um, one thing about these companies, they don't like to uh, mention things. And apparently he put in his resignation like over a month ago. And we only all found out like last week. And so it was just like, oh, great. And, uh, I mean, he was, uh, he was one of those guys, uh, he was, he was a good boss. Like I said, very laid back. Um, he could talk your ear off. I mean, he's one of those guys, if you ask him what time it is, he'll tell you, he'll tell you how to build a fucking, a watch. He's one of those guys. I mean, when I interviewed with him and the interview was like an hour and a half, you guys know I like to talk. He's worse. Imagine that. Oh my God. Yeah. My interview lasted for like an hour and a half and it shouldn't have, it should have lasted a half an hour or 20 minutes. <laughs> It really, it shouldn't have lasted that long um, for what I was, you know, going for. But yeah, it was like an hour and a half. Anyways, so that was, a sh that was, yeah, that sucked because, you know, you know, I really enjoyed working for him. I was like his right hand man. And now it's like, well, what the fuck now? And things are changing in my job. And I honestly don't know what's going to happen. It's kind of scary, but at the same time, you know, I got contingencies, you know, and everything and. I'm going to obviously keep on doing this stuff and that keeps on going up and up and I'm hoping that it just keeps on so I can just, you know, eventually just make a living doing this and it'll get there. I have faith in myself. Sometimes I don't. Many times I don't. I know this. Every YouTuber or every person you watch that's in the industry, they have moments, uh, I would say at least what? At least three times. A month. Unless you're just really well established. But I would say that everybody, a creative person, at least three times a month goes, what the fuck? Why am I here? I'm a piece of shit. I don't know what I'm doing. How this is all going to go away like tomorrow. You know, and that's that's the scary thing about doing this stuff. Especially if you're getting into it. I mean, you got to be prepared to just keep on doing it and keep on going and going and not getting anything back. I mean, I've been doing this shit for seven years, and I'm still not able to live off of it. You know, there are some people that 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 dive in and hit that right niche and hit that right everything, or niche, I should say, and it all just works out, and they go viral, and then they're established within like a year. I've seen it happen, you know, but sometimes, but then I go, well, well, this is why, because everything clicked at the right time, and they pounced on it, and that, and you know, power to them. You know, when it comes to me, I'm trying to be a voice in a movie community that's huge, saturated, so many. It's hard to be unique, but I would say I am unique, and I and I appreciate all you guys that send me messages, whether it be through Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, whatever. I get messages all the time saying that they, you know, everybody appreciates my content, likes my voice. You know, you know, I'm a I'm a I'm a unique voice as opposed to some of these other fuckers out there. You know. Um, and I, I obviously, I, I, I appreciate that. And that's why I do it. The fact that I do reach out, you know, and it's crazy that they're coming from all sides of the world too, which is awesome. I love it. I love you. <laughs> and we just had Easter, not Valentine's day. Hopefully your Valentine's day or your Easter was good. Mine was cool. Awkward, but what? <laughs> eh, you know, family, you just, eh, I'm not going to go into that. <laughs> it's just a little awkward stuff, but not, not. Not too bad. We still had a good meal and uh, got to see my cousin who I hadn't seen since Christmas who went through a hard time. And uh, it was good catching up with him. And uh, anyways, so yeah, when it comes to reality work, I'm questioning whether how long I'm actually going to be at this job. I've been promised that I will be there. 
you know, but who the fuck knows? Because people who are promising don't exactly know what the hell is going on. So I'm just kind of rolling with the punches, you know. If something happens, something happens, you know, I... Luckily, um, this is luckily that's not my only source of income, and hopefully, like if they do end up closing shop with certain things, and I get laid off, I'll get like a, a little severance or something. I can get some unemployment, and then you know, I mean, pretty much my plan and my plan, what always has been my plan, is to get the fuck out of California. Jesus, <laughs> I know this is where like inter- the entertainment capital of the world is, but it sucks economy wise and 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 just a lot of things the economy is crap here i want to move to nevada i want to move to vegas which is not exactly vegas i mean there's it's like there's towns around vegas um i've I've said that before i believe Uh, i got family over there and it's just nice the way it's been developed and everything and uh there's just many times i go there and i was like i just want to i just want to live here it's nice and clean it's not that bad you know, the economy's great. I mean, I I could find a one-bedroom nice apartment, like nice, for $730 a month. And if I were to find someone like that here, it'd be almost twice that. You know, economy just sucks. So my plan is always to end up there eventually. You know, I know, like, oh, why would you go away from, you know, the entertainment capital? Yeah, but I'd only be about three and a half hours away if I ever had, if I ever got to the point where I needed to go to L.A., you know, which could happen eventually if I get further up in the, the movie sphere. So, you know, Vegas is perfect because, yeah, it's a three and a half hour drive. It's a it's like barely an hour flight if I needed to do that. So I w- it wouldn't even be that bad. It's not like I'd be moving across country. And I would still come back to visit, you know, family and friends here that I have here. But eventually that's what I want to do. So it's pretty, it's been pretty crazy. But, uh, you know, I've been trying to think about also bringing back some of my old um, segments to my channel. Some of you might remember um, my autocorrect failness. That's right, autocorrect failness. I used to do these autocorrect videos where I, I, I basically just took autocorrects and I, and, I, and, I, and I injected life into them. I did voices. I basically read them like a conversation in different kind of voices and sound effects. And a lot of people dug the shit out of them. They loved them. Absolutely. They're hilarious. I even would catch myself laughing my ass off. And I'm the one doing them. You know, it's always good when you're when you're making something funny and you can make yourself laugh. That shows that, hey, that's good. But if you're constantly making yourself laugh, then there might be a problem. You might just be full of yourself. <laughs> I'm just saying. Like when my normal videos, I, I hardly make myself laugh but there's occasions where if i know i'm like hey i'm gonna do this wow this is a good idea right here i will make myself laugh anyways so i'm, I'm i actually been testing the waters i posted a couple i i uh from an old video i've been posting on twitter and it's a good response and i think i'm gonna just bring that segment back i'm not sure how i'm gonna do it because the reason why it went away is because I got in trouble for posting those because they are pretty explicit. I didn't censor them. Um, apparently, it it, uh, it 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 violated the community guidelines, and and uh, I got my channel suspended for a month. It was bad. That's why I started the second channel. You know that I that I recently stopped using. I had to do that, but uh, so I got to figure out a way where I want to bring those back, but I can't. I got to make sure I don't get in trouble this time. So definitely, I'm. I mean, I'm gonna have to censor them if I put them on YouTube. But I put them on Daily Motion, and Daily Motion. I mean, they're still there. I mean, I have a website and everything with the ones I salvaged because I had over a hundred of those videos, and uh, I got reported because people suck. Simple as that. And uh, yeah. So we'll see what happens with all that. Um, we'll we'll see. I have to look into it all, but I'm I'm gonna bring it back, and I have a new name because autocorrect failness was just something I couldn't think of a good name for it. So I just well just put failness, whatever that works, right? And uh, but I found a, I, I came up with a new name. So be on the lookout for some of those. I actually posted one on the channel, a Benedict Cumberbatch one that I thought was funny. It was clean. It was pretty funny. So thought about just uh you know yeah we'll see what happens with that so anyways what else is going on uh we still talking about guns gun control non-stop 
What are we going to do? Yeah, it's all fucked up. It's all bad. Um, you want to know the... I have the absolute solution right here that apparently um, will satisfy the people that are really advocating for all this. Um, make a time machine. Go back to when the first gun was invented. Destroy it. And keep going back in time every time a gun was going to get created. And then they won't get created. And then we'll be fine. <laughs> Look, I'm not a gun guy. Uh, I have family members that are gun people, big time. Um, you know, I'm not a bit. Well, I'm not a big gun guy, but I do have one. Uh, I'm not gonna lie, but uh, you know, it's just you live alone, it's not in the best of neighborhoods. Sometimes you just, you just never know. I don't go shooting. Uh, I can't even remember the last time. I think when I got it, that was when I the last time I. I'm just not big on it. I just have it there as you know. Hey, it's there. And if someone's going to bust in my place, then I'm going to grab it. And there you go. So I'm not a big gun guy. Um, I do think there should be a discussion, most definitely. <sighs> but the way that it's being discussed is just not good on both sides. It's not, it's not good for both sides. You got one side that says, ah, you know, kids shouldn't, shouldn't be in fear of going to school or we shouldn't have this or they shouldn't have this. Shouldn't be armed guards. It shouldn't be this. Yes, yes. And people shouldn't be born with cancer. But sometimes that's just the way it is. Okay? And banning all the guns, banning them completely, is not going to solve anything. Okay? And like Now, I'm all, I'm all about opening le legisl legislation and discussion and everything like that. And I'm actually for the whole idea of everyone getting a license and having to go through some hours to get that license to be a gun owner. And, of course, big-time background checks, which, well, in California, they're like the strictest gun laws. It takes a while for you to get that gun, you know, depending. So I, it's just funny. There's so much – there's so much – there's so many things, so many things you have to do in California – I mean, other states, not so much. Yeah, I get that. But, you know, this whole thing of like, yeah, they shouldn't. Sh yeah, well, that's just the way it is. It's just the way it is. So, okay, we can have, we could discuss this and, hey, we could put a license on it all and everybody has to do this and everybody has to do that. But there's, oh, there's more guns in this fucking country than there are people. Okay? Let that sink in. There are guns circulating out there that are, that are that more than there are people in this country. Okay? So you could put a complete ban on every gun there is possible and everything. The bad people are still going to get a gun. And it's still going to be an AR-15. It, it, it could be. It's just not going to happen. So, yes, we could discuss all that shit, and I'm all about it. Like, hey, you know, this, I mean, the marching thing is total a waste of time. But, it, hey, whatever, if that makes you feel good, do whatever the fuck you want. Um... We could talk about all that, but you know what? We can also have some backup plans just in case there's still going to be that fucking asshole, that, 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 that fucked up person, that fucked up kid who's been raised wrong or has something going on, taking some medication, decides to bring a gun to school and shoot up the place. Okay? It's, I find it funny that people are like, oh, there shouldn't be security guards, shouldn't be this and cameras and stuff like that at a school. I'm like, why not? That's where your kids go. All that shit, is that, <laughs> that's happening at your bank. There's an armed, there's armed security, there's cameras, there's bulletproof glass, there's reinforced doors. But what, are you trying to tell me that, that your money is more important than kids? Okay, that's fine, cool, whatever. <laughs> that's what I, I don't understand, you know? I'm like, there's so many, I remember I saw this, this thing after the Parkland shooting. This kid was like uh, trying to, you know, he was telling people about this thing that you could put under a door that basically prevents it from being opening. And you could put a bunch of pressure on it and you can't open this door. I'm like, yes, there you go. Stuff like that. That's what we need. We can have our discussions and we could talk about this, but everybody just like blaming the NRA. That's fucking retarded. Okay. Even if the NRA was to completely be wiped out, the shit will still happen. Okay, yeah, and I get it. Those guys, I'm not, I don't, I'm not advocating for those guys. I don't care. They're a bunch of fucking rich people with guns. But at the same time, it's not like they're handing these guns to these fucking fucked up people. And it's funny when I see people talk about like, oh yeah, they, they're they're the they're a terrorist organization. They they're, they want dead children. I'm going, what in the shit? Jesus Christ, that's that's an accusation that I would never put on my worst enemy. 
that you want dead kids? If you say that to, to somebody who's just in a, yeah, that's fucked up. You don't say that. Because I'm, yeah, I'm pretty sure that most of those people don't want dead kids. But at the same time, they should be trying to... But at the same time, the way that they push back, like NRA people push back, is also pretty annoying. It's like sometimes when I hear their side and their arguments, it's just like, oh, God, see, why'd you say that? You're f- Oh, God. It's annoying. It, it sucks being kind of in, in the middle. When you're looking at both sides, you're trying to take in, like, okay, I agree with that, I agree with that. You're looking at both sides, and you just kind of go, what the fuck is going on here? It's really dumb. Anyways, I shouldn't talk too much about that. It's it's all crazy. We just need to be smart about it. And right now, we're not being smart about it. Piece of chocolate. You know, Easter candy. I just had it. I was like, hmm, I need a little, I got a little sweet tooth going on right now. Especially talking about all this political shit. I don't need to talk about that. People just need to relax. Especially when it when, when this shit kind of like goes into the fandom. That's what I hate. I hate that shit. You know. Because today, um, there was a certain person, I'm not going to name him, but a certain person that, that uh, writes and does a podcast for uh, a well-known website, basically uh, talked about Snyder. And um, a lot of people got really upset where he they went after him and everything. And I was going, okay, wait a minute. I didn't see exactly what happened. But I was seeing on my timeline people going, man, somebody was making fun of, they were mocking Snyder for his dyslexia and his and his anxiety. And I went, holy shit, somebody did that? Somebody like, no, like in, in this world, like a voice? And then I come to find out that the guy was just, he was making a comparison. He was looking at Snyder's responses on like Vero and how he writes them to, he's all, yeah, see, this is the way the guy writes. I mean, how do you expect him to write like a, a great script? Now, he wasn't mocking. He didn't know about the dyslexia. He did not know at all. So that was an error on him. And he was like, oh, shit. And he backed off, deleted the tweets, and apologized, which good on him. That's what you're supposed to do. Um, I don't agree that he needed to make that comparison because the way that somebody posts on social media, like a fucking tweet, the way I write a fucking tweet doesn't mean like I would take that kind of structure and put it in a fucking script. Really dumb. That part I don't agree with him on. But at least he did that, and he tried to he tried to calm the fire. But he did get attacked, and you know, the way fandom is, it's it's crazy because I see it all the time, and I try to be I try to be you know, I try to listen to people, I try to open a discussion and everything, and it, it can be difficult because I mean, a, couple, a few days ago I was talking about uh, Spider Man Homecoming. You got brought up that Matt Damon passed up like a villain role in Spider-Man Homecoming 2. And man, I mean, some DC fans will just say that that is like the worst movie ever. And, you know, it's fine to just not like it, but to say it's the worst movie ever. I mean, I brought up, I was like, I was brought up like, well, I mean, obviously you didn't see Matt Damon in, in, in The Great Wall because that movie was fucking horrible. Horrible. And... They still said, oh, no, yeah, this one's better. Well, Homecoming's way worse. And I'm going, okay, see, that's the part of fandom I don't like because there could be a movie I absolutely hate. For instance, the movie I hated the most last year, Valerian, okay? I hated that. That was my my top, my number one least favorite movie that I saw or least favorite movie, movie that I saw. You get what I'm saying. And I could still pick out things that I liked about it. I could still say the visuals were beautiful, okay? That the world that Luke Besson was trying to build was actually something that would be awesome to see, but everything else was so bad that I just could not, I was cringing the whole time. See, when you can't, when you're just automatically shitting on the movie from start to finish, you can't pick out anything, you're on one side, you're biased, Okay, that's just the way it is. And this goes for MCU fanboys too when they shit on everything that's DCEU and they can't pinpoint. I mean, there were some other assholes saying that they, uh, I mean, he was, it's so funny because it's so easy to hook people. I mean, this one guy was talking about, you know, the end of Man of Steel and how it made no sense that Clark, little Clark, put on a red cape 
and he was standing kind of like how Superman is, and it's like, how, how did, who's he mimicking? There's no Superman, there's no heroes that had capes during that time, and it's just like, okay, and then people gave him reasoning, they gave him the reasons, they gave him the reasons why, well, like, oh, well, he, subconsciously, he's, he's projecting out his people, because obviously his people had capes, and they were mighty, and blah, 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 whatever, I mean, even though they mm, kind of weren't on Krypton, but you get what I'm saying, and then people were like, well, you know, it's just, it was just uh, an imagery thing, you know, like, Snyder was trying to foreshadow what he was going to become, because obviously the context of that shot was his mom saying that, oh yeah, he knew, Clark, he knew what you were going to become, and you see the parents looking at him as he's standing like that, and it's just, it's just, a, it's symbolism, you know, it's, it's, it, the imagery just speaks for itself, it's very comic booky, which is funny, and the guy still went, the fucking Snyder fans, Dad, they're storming the fucking castle, it's like, asshole, you weren't even, okay, so, that was a troll tweet, and everybody fell for it, you didn't want an answer, you wanted to stir up some shit, and that's what happens, but I also see that on the DC side, too, there's some people that I follow where, wow, like, okay, you can't complain about one side when you're doing the exact same thing, you know? And, you know, when it came to today, when it came to the, uh, that person getting hounded, I mean, it sucks that we get very knee-jerky, and I hate that. I hate that we're just instantly just, ah, the knee just, ah, and we just pounce. I've done it too. I'm not saying that I haven't. I've done it too, or I, I've gotten knee-jerky, and I don't like it. Um, But uh, I think when it comes to being fans of Zack Snyder, you know, us being fans of Zack Snyder, we're just so used to getting shit on that we immediately pounce and defend, you know? And I, and I totally understand that because ever since like man of steel, it's like, we've been constantly defending and constantly, you know, and we get called everything under the fucking sky, racist, Nazi, you know, misogynist, this, that, and this, I've been called it all too, just for supporting him. This dude who just, (laughs) I mean, Oh, it's like, it's funny how he gets so much shit for being that, how just the same kind of people hate him, you know, these fucking feminists with snow cone cherry hair and black rim glasses, pale as fuck, hate him, and then these dudes who are all pudgy, doughy, with glasses and beards and shit like that, and they just, they hate him too, it's like, what in the fuck, eh, I mean, it's, it's fine to not like somebody, but when you're constantly saying stuff like this other guy did about the Man of Steel ending. He was just looking to stir up shit. And we got to do our best to try to ignore that. I always get tired of seeing outrage over a tweet of somebody who has less than 400 400 followers. Like, why are we getting upset over that? You know? But then, of course, there's some that have a big following and they're saying stupid shit. There's one Harley something, Harley, I forgot what it was. She, she's, she hates men. She is, she must, um, she does not have a good relationship with her dad, first off. And she's probably been fucked over from some guys. So she absolutely hates men. Okay. Oh God. She's so hot. I'm falling in love every tweet that she posts. Harley, I forgot what it is. Harley, uh, Harley Ivy or something like that. She doesn't believe that in 2018 that any males should have a lead in a superhero movie now. It's ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous. <laughs> it's like, what in the fuck? I just want to go like, hey, how's your dad? <laughs> and I guarantee you the answer is, fuck that guy. Ugh, and that's a problem, man. That is like the number one problem that plagues everybody, man. It's the parents. It's parents. I mean, it's it's crazy how much a dad is needed in people's lives. And a lot of this, a lot of our problems can stem to that. You know, I'm not saying everything, but I mean, when it comes to, I mean, families, it's all about families, keeping families together and just raising kids right. I mean, that's, that's what's going to help out the situation. And for, you know, for the most part, we're doing our best, but in the, the, the real bad areas, you know, and crime and stuff like that, and just mental health and, and this that and this, you just start looking and you go like, well, okay, well, where's the dad? And even, you can even make the, the, the argument for the mom. Where's the mom? Because the mom plays also the big role too, but it just seems like, you know, I mean, obviously when it, when you're looking at prison population, it's men. Men are the ones that are totally the ones causing the crime. 
and they're getting put away. And now there's, you know, young boys and girls getting raised without dads. And then they end up turning into just not good people. I mean, there's exceptions to the rule all the time, of course. But, you know, it's just the way it is, man. And it's, it sucks. It really does. But um, uh, as for that, fandom, yeah, we need to relax, not be so knee-jerky, okay? I'm going to try my best not to. But it sucks when I'm when I'm having debates with DC fans and they're looking at me like, what the fuck? You actually enjoyed Homecoming? I'm like, yeah, sorry. I'm a movie guy. I mean, what what is my what is what is my avatar? What is my name? Film junkie. I didn't say comic book junkie, I didn't say DC junkie or Marvel junkie or anything like that. I mean I love comic books, I love these characters, but I mean I started this thing because I love movies. You know, so I can find enjoyment in movies. Is Spider-Man Homecoming the best Spider-Man movie ever? Fuck no. <laughs> Spider-Man 2, the original. Raimi, Spider-Man 2. I don't think anything's going to beat that. And I would even say, like, Amazing Spider-Man 1 is better. Is also better. And I, the original Spider-Man 1 is better, too. But, uh, yeah. It was just funny. Like, what in the fuck? I was just looking and I'm going, okay, I was having a discussion with DC guys and they, they were acting exactly how MCU fans were acting when I'd have discussions with them. You know, it's just, that's not good. And then to complain that they're worse, which they can be. I mean, a lot of them are really bad, but I've also seen some really bad DC fans too. They do exist. But when it comes to, like I said, when it comes to being like a fan of Zack Snyder, yes, we could be very knee jerky because we've been called everything under the sun. And I know, and I try to be mutual with, on Twitter, with a bunch of people who aren't like that. And sadly, I'm mutual with people that are like that, that, that act ridiculous. And it sucks. And I try to be like, I try to discuss with them, like, hey, can we relax a little bit, you know? We don't have to shit on everything. Everything. I mean, I literally got a tweet one time that said, like, hey, are we boycotting Infinity War? Who's down? I'm like, I already got my ticket. Sorry, I'm looking forward to it. It's my bad. You know? It's like I can't. But I'm not going to be at the, you know, other side. And I wasn't going, oh, my God, Black Panther, greatest movie ever. Which was, yes, I totally agree. Even though I enjoyed Black Panther a lot, it was overhyped. It was. And the box office after that, week after week, totally reveals that. And I'm going to be doing a video about it. Fuck. Piss me off, man. Every week after Black Panther came out, something different. And these people that complain, complain, and complain about diversity and everything... Yeah, that's all they want to do. That's the thing. People just want to complain. They don't actually want shit to happen. Because if shit were to actually resolve, there'd be nothing to complain about. And they can't they can't pat themselves on the back about shit. They don't really want... Just like that one guy. He didn't really want an answer for that Man of Steel scene at the end. He didn't really want the answer. Nobody... There's a lot of people that don't really want solutions because then they wouldn't have anything to complain about and it's sad it's really fucking sad it's a horrible disservice to fandom and just in the world in general he's fucked up he's fucked up bro by the way speaking of fandom hey this uh this this saturday april 7th ben affleck is going to be at the fan expo in dallas seven o'clock i don't know if it's eastern time uh they're, they're central time. So if it's 7 o'clock their time, that means it's going to be 5 o'clock my time. So 7 o'clock, I'm thinking it's going to be central time. I don't know. It could be Eastern time. I hope so. That means it'd be earlier. Apparently, he's going to be answering questions. <laughs> oh, my God. Fuck. Good luck, Ben. There's going to be Batman questions up the ass. And I don't know what the hell's going on with that. I wish I knew more about it, guys. I wish I could tell you that he's all set and ready to go with Matt Reeves. And they're just going to be working together and they're going to give us something mind-blowing. But I can't tell you that. I mean, after everything that Affleck endured through all this, the number one reason, and he said this many times before, the number one reason why Ben Affleck joined, why he, be, why he said, all right, I'm going to be Batman. 
is because Snyder. Because of Zack Snyder. That's pretty much why all of them did, by the way. That's why we, you know, Momoa, Gal Gadot, Fisher, Ezra. Because of Snyder. Affleck, you know, he heard, like, what Snyder wanted to do. He wanted to uh, bring a version of Dark Knight Returns to the big screen. Sold. But then, of course, Warner Brothers wanted to expand on the universe. So Affleck said, okay, I'll do more movies. But in his contract was Batman vs. Superman, Justice League 1, and Justice League 2. That's it. He did a courtesy, and we loved him for it, for doing uh, Suicide Squad. That little cameo in Suicide Squad. That was like a courtesy thing. My chair is farting. It wasn't me, I swear. Um, and obviously with the hints that we got, I pretty, I'm pretty sure... And he would have been well into his 50s by this this time that Batman was, in fact, going to die in Justice League 2. Perfect way to go out. Bam. Now, when it came to the Batman solo movie, I honestly think when all that news was going about, this was around, you know, when Justice League, all this shit, and blah, blah, blah. Warner Brothers was trying to distract people with all the bullshit that was happening behind the scenes. With Justice League, they were trying to be like, hey, hey, Batman solo movie. How about that, huh? Ben Affleck, he's going to write, direct, star, produce, be the, the the crew member, key key grip, and this, that. Fuck that. That was never going to be the fucking case. That wasn't going to be the case. I see right through it. It's bullshit. Absolute bullshit. They wasn't going to do all that. They did that. They threw that all out there to distract, man. They wanted to get people hyped up for this Batman movie. That was supposed to start filming like last year in spring or something like that. I don't even remember. It's all bullshit, man. And now there's a chance that he's not going to even be Batman anymore. And I wouldn't be surprised. I wouldn't be shocked if he walks away now. So we'll see what happens with that. Uh, more of the Snyder Cut. I mean, <sighs> the Ray Fisher stuff, that was cool. He hasn't really done too much like the the other times he was um, throwing out those deleted shots but he uh, expressed his um ex excitement for aquaman and james wan showing a deleted aquaman shot from justice league absolutely beautiful practical and they removed it ah, ah still over two hours get rid of it fuck you that was a beautiful shot i remember seeing that in the first footage we saw of justice league where he's where momo is just standing there and water just goes all over him. And I remember he posted on his Instagram and said, yep, all practical. I'm like, fuck yeah, man. That's what I'm talking about. That's called art. That is called cinematic art. That's how you make a goddamn fucking movie. But now, so I don't know what the fuck you're doing. Jesus Christ. And they deleted it. So fucking ridiculous. It pisses me off. And then, of course, the Ray Fisher stuff, football scene. And like I said in my video, could you imagine a football sequence directed by Zack Snyder? Okay? Slow-mo Zack Snyder shots, great cinematography. You got the snow falling down for that extra ambiance. And you got Vic Stone diving towards the end zone to score a touchdown. Ugh! Would have been... Yeah, you know that shit exists. It does. Be an absolute beautiful sequence. <clears throat> Guaranteed. <sighs> frustrating. Pretty frustrating. Ah. But, you know, we'll see what happens. I don't know. Uh, as far as I know, you know what I mean? Eh. I think some more stuff's going to definitely happen this month. Hopefully. From what I'm hearing. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, long as stuff just keeps on trickling out there, I guess. It's good. It's good. All right. Let's let's start answering some questions now, huh? What? What? what oh, yeah. <laughs> I saw people going, what the hell with the condom snorting? Yeah, I can't even believe it myself. It's ridiculous. Okay, here we go, guys. Let's, uh, like I said, if you want to ask me a question, just use the uh, hashtag Film Junket Podcast. Not necessary. At Kid Fate asked, with hell to pay bringing the animated Thawne back into the movies, 
and a possible Flashpoint movie on the horizon, who do you think should play the reverse Flash to Ezra Miller's version of Barry Allen? I've, I've answered this before. I like the dude from uh, uh, something Hall. Ah, I can't remember. The dude from, jeez, uh, I can't even remember the show now. The Showtime show, the serial killer that's also a, a detective kind of guy. Can't remember. I'm totally, totally blanking out right now. Uh, I do like McConaughey. A lot of people threw him out there, and I was like, yeah, I like that. Matthew McConaughey? Why not, man? That would be interesting. Um, Clayton. Clayton. Uh, Clayta, Claytalian, sorry. I was. I talk to this guy a lot, and I, I apologize. Um, I mean, him doing a con appearance could be good for remaining. He's talking about the uh, Ben Affleck panel at Fan Expo in Dallas. Yeah. Could be it could be positive. I mean, shit. Maybe he's gonna announce. Maybe he's gonna officially announce that him and Matt Reeves are gonna go on, on a fucking adventure. Uh, Nasir. He always asks questions, and I appreciate it. Hey, Dave, who would you cast as Fantastic Four in the MCU? Also, I may or may not be in LA this summer, so would you be down for a summer blockbuster movie night? Maybe a Jurassic World two type of movie. Yeah, we can hang out. Um, is that? Oh yeah, that comes. When does the fuck does that come out? This week, this 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 summer, right? Um, my Fantastic Four. See, you always, you guys always blindside me. Not blindside me. It's always a normal thing. With the fan cast. I remember somebody actually did a really good one. Because uh, apparently, you know, there was that post, and I always hate it when these posts go around because it's not news that uh, John Krasinski said that he'd be down to play Reed Richards in fantastic four and somebody went like oh okay he's reed richards um um uh his wife emily blunt is uh invisible girl damn i am drawing blanks on names right now uh wow as uh, storm sue jesus christ she'd be playing sue storm and then um and then uh, uh zach efron would play johnny which yeah that's good and then um What's his nuts? I can't remember names. Ugh, Jesus. It's just, I don't know what's going on in my brain right now. But the dude from Stranger Things who's playing Hellboy, playing The Thing. I thought that was actually pretty damn good. But, um, yeah, I mean, I think I would actually dig something like that. I mean, I like I like the Jason Bas Bateman Reed Richards. That'd be kind of cool. Uh, Sue Storm. Uh, I actually think Emily Blunt would be a really good Sue Storm. You know, let's get her in something, you know. Um and Johnny, yeah, I would think Zac Efron is a good choice. Um, I can't even think of who else could, yeah. And then the thing, I mean, it should be all mocap, right? I think what's his name would be, yeah. So that's I'm, I'm gonna go with that one there, bud. Um, let's see, Macund underscore n n twenty seven has Jeff Johns sold out. <laughs> You're probably talking about the fact that he put the Incredible Hulk banner on his uh, Facebook. Who knows what the fuck? All I know is he's not happy, apparently. Yeah, he's not happy. Probably with the the things that are happening behind the scenes. What's her name? Taking a leave of absence, which I think it just means, oh, yeah, she's done. Well, you know, I a lot of people, there's some DC fans that absolutely hate Jeff Johns. And then there's ones that go like, well, wait a minute, it's not his fault. And I was on that side for a bit. I was like, hey, I don't know. Hey, leave John's alone. I don't know. You know, he was just thrown into this. But then I heard some things and I went, okay. So Jeff Johns should stay away from the movies. He really should. He should go back to writing books because he's done well with that. And I like his books. But when it comes to movies, it just doesn't work. Yes, he helped Wonder Woman and that one did work. Okay. So uh, one out of three <laughs> ain't bad, I guess. But Green Lantern, when that came out, he was part of that. Fucking shit. And then, of course, Justice League. Terrible. Um, section XP12. Hey, Dave. Batman vs. Superman came out two years ago last week, and I was wondering what was the most surprising part for you. Like Easter eggs, references. Um, the most surprising thing that got me like, holy shit, what is going on here, was Flash coming through, you know, the little portal. That was supposedly a dream, which wasn't a dream, which was <laughs> confirmed by Snyder, which we all knew. 
You know, and the, uh, Scott Medelson, whatever the fuck that guy is, I, I don't agree with him a lot. I think he's annoying. He's uh, Mr. White Guilt, Mr. Oh, God, you know, virtue signaling, pat myself on the back, motherfucker. It writes on, I forgot what. Um, he actually said something, too. Like, yeah, we all knew that. Even if you're a fan of the movie or not, we got that. That 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 the whole, that if Lois died, that would have sent Superman into that killing Superman we saw in the nightmare. Obviously, we got that. It wasn't news. I mean, but it's it's always cool to get Snyder to be like, yeah, I agree. But to turn it into this, oh my God, mind blowing news is ridiculous. Stop doing that. When he when he confirms like little Easter eggs, that's when it's cool. Okay, like the whole anti life equation and shit. Um, but yeah, I would say like the Flash coming through at that. That was the most surprising thing. When I was in the movie theater, I'm like, oh my God, it's it's a it, 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 uh, hall. <laughs> yeah, that's the one that did. Uh, oh, Macund has asked the second question. I honestly don't want this Tom Har- Holland, Peter Parker to be linked with Hardy's Venom. What do you think? Well, I guess we'll see. I wouldn't be surprised. I've heard back and forth that it is, it isn't, it is, it isn't. Uh, who knows? It honestly wouldn't bother me. I like Tom Holland's Spider-Man. Era said it. Is Homecoming a great movie? No. There's a lot of things that I have issues with that, and I've expressed those. I don't like what they did with some of the other characters. The whole John Hughes thing um, kind of worked, but didn't. One thing about that, I mean, if you look at look at look at Peter in Civil War, and then look at him in in Homecoming, it's a different Peter. It's a different apartment, different clothes. He's wearing thrift store clothes in Homecoming, but he's totally modern in Civil War. And then if you look at shots of him in Infinity War, he's back to modern. It's like okay. Can we stick with one kind of type of Peter? The John Hughes thing didn't work, and I hope they kind of dropped that a little bit because I don't think it really worked that well. And it just sucks what they did with Flash Thompson. MJ, it was fucking retarded. I don't like any of that, but I liked. I like. I still like uh, Falcon, uh, Vulture, not Falcon. <laughs> God damn, it's too many birds in the MCU. <sighs> you know what I'm talking about. I liked him. I liked Keaton. I liked the twist. Um, I liked some of the stuff, you know, and I didn't mind the Iron Man stuff. Maybe it was a little bit too much at times, but, uh, you know, it's whatever. Um, Siddharth D asked, what's your opinion on the recent changes in DC Comics? Trunks are back, thing. Do you think it's a good idea? No, don't. Can we let Superman evolve past the fucking ready teddies? I only said that because it rhymed. Whitey tidies, you know. Um, but you know what? It's the comic books. It doesn't bother me. If they bring it back into the movies, that'll be stupid. I mean, the, the whole reason why superheroes had the trunks is because they ha- they were trying to look like gladiator warriors who fought naked, pretty much. Or in just like a diaper. Because obviously when you see a superhero drawn, it does look like that because the, the, the costumes are so skin tight. And it's like they're, it's almost like they're just wearing gloves, undies, and boots, you know? So they look like those warriors. And it's not needed now. And who knows what DC's doing with all that. Hopefully they don't put them back on Batman and all of them. I know they made the joke about it yesterday. But that was April Fool's, so whatever. Uh, Scarzon asks, People say DC is playing catch-up to Marvel when it comes to their movies. But in its Marvel that's making movie movies in response to what DC has done, making Cap 3, uh, Civil War in response to BVS, Captain Marvel in response to uh, Wonder Woman, what are these facts? Why are these facts ignored? Um, I don't like the argument of this. You know, it's funny, I saw that a lot. Oh yeah, Civil War was a response to Batman or Superman. I'm like, well, maybe, possibly. Because they're like, oh yeah, remember it was supposed to be Captain America, the Serpent something, Serpent Society or whatever? I'm like, was that really going to be that? I always thought it was just, you know, a cover. It's like, I don't think we were actually ever going to get that movie. Maybe it was pitched at one point, but they were like, no, we gotta go Civil War. You know what? It doesn't matter. (laughs) I don't even think... Captain Marvel wasn't exactly a response to Wonder Woman because Marvel doesn't have a Wonder Woman. They really don't. And I love it when people just keep talking about that. I'm like, Marvel doesn't have a Wonder Woman. You know? They should have had a Black Widow movie a long time ago. Fuck no, they shouldn't have. She's not that exciting of a character. She's a side character. Yeah, they could have a small movie. 
But you know what? They all they already had this plan lined out to get like the big heroes out there with their worlds. And I think that's a lot smarter than just, yeah, let's make a Black Widow movie. And I said that many times before. But people just, you know, of course, want to push back on that. I'm like, all right. Apparently, you know, better than me. But apparently you think like a fucking Black Widow movie is going to make a billion dollars. Bullshit. It won't even make Wonder Woman money. And they know this. Captain Marvel probably has a little more of a chance because you know what? She's a little more family friendly. Black Widow's an assassin, guys. Hey, sweetie. Come here, Dakota. Come here. Who's your favorite superhero? I like Black Widow because she kills people. <laughs> Come on. Ugh. But Black Widow eventually will, and that's fine. Jesus, I think she still needs a Netflix series. It'd be a lot better so they can go gritty with her because she's a fucking assassin. Um... Merch that Ren, that's Ren. Uh, stories from DC and Marvel. Would you enjoy to see on the big screen from DC? I would enjoy the Blackest Night adaption, adaptation. And on Marvel, I would love to see the 80s version of Secret Wars. Yeah, Secret Wars would be nice to see, but it'd be almost... It's almost like these movies should be on TV because there's so much uh, with it. And I, I, I would... I would love to see the actual Civil War. I mean, it's so much better than what we got. But the thing is, they, they had to they had to change it and dumb it down for the movies. When it comes to DC, you know, I, I want to see Kingdom Come. I want to see those stories up there. But how they but we got kind of we got a little bit of that, somewhat, partially of that with this with the movies we have now. And that's really that all they can do. That's why we got partial Dark Knight Returns. We got partial Death of Superman. You know, it's like you can't do a straight adaptation of it, you know? So that's what's hard. I mean, I, I would want to see, uh, I just, I'm going to I, I just started reading Long Halloween from Batman again. Um, even Batman Year One, I would love to see a perfect, a perfect adaptation of that. That'd be awesome. Uh, Karen, uh, painter of comics, at painter of comics. Would you give, a, give, give us a peek at some of the things you've heard or know of this stuff that went on uh, into the making of Justice League movie? Well, a lot of it's out there already, first off. And I can't talk too much of other things I've heard. Because I just don't, you know. I'm trying to find ways to more, like, uh, get it out there, you know, where other people involved and they don't just say I'm a Snyder, a Snyder tard. By the way, can we stop saying Marvel Tard and DC Turd and whatever the hell? You guys are fucking adults. Stop saying Marvel Tard, especially because it's just stupid. All right? Stop doing that. And on the on the other side, if you're listening, stop calling DC Tard or DC Turd. You guys are goddamn... You're probably not all grown up. Some of you are teenagers, but, you know, you're... Come on. Fucking A. Stop it. It's, retar it's retarded. <laughs> Ah, let's see. Tevin underscore Atwi. Hey, Dave. Have you seen the new Krypton TV show? What do you think about it? I'm a huge Man of Steel fan, and I loved it. I haven't watched it yet. Like I, I've said many times, I'm bad with weekly shows. I kind of usually, when it comes to stuff like this, like when it comes to superhero shows, I wait till the season's over, and then I binge the shit out of it on the weekends. So I'm probably going to wait and binge the first season once it's over. And uh, it looks great from what I've seen. I mean, Jesus Christ, the way that they fucking show him Brainiac. Ha! Made my chode tighten up, man. Uh, Michael, or yeah, Michael Manette. He asks, what was your absolute worst theater experience? Oh, man, that's a hard one. Uh, I mean, you, you have those moments where somebody will not stop coughing. Kids... Won't stop jumping up and down and making and talking really loud. That's hard to, uh, I'm, I'm trying to, I'm try, I can't really pinpoint that. I really have to think about that one. There's nothing that stands out. I haven't had like truly, truly terrible experiences. I mean, I could have just answered you with, when I watched the Ghostbusters reboot. <laughs> that truly was a terrible experience. But, uh... I'm just trying to think if there was anything like really, really bad. I'm like, nah, there was... it's just, no, nah, I can't like pinpoint. I've never, where I've just like flat out walked out. I've never, 
ever walked out of a movie. Never walked out on a movie, if I remember. But you know, I can't really think of like a the worst one. I mean, I've had moments where it's like somebody behind you is coughing, or they're you know chit chatting. There's kids that won't stop, and you fucking people that bring infants into the movie theater because you're goddamn selfish and you can't get a babysitter or you just can't just hey you're not going to the movies and your goddamn kid starts crying or gah, 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 making noises and interrupting you know you're 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 terrible you're terrible i'm sorry don't do that please don't do that you're fucked up okay movies you know you don't bring a goddamn newborn jesus Christo, Brothers in Light, at Brothers in Light, in the DCU, you forgot the E, when casting support characters. Well, he's got a picture of uh, Green Lantern. Uh, I'm not sure when. <laughs> Who knows? It's in the writing process, apparently still. Casting? That's not going to be for a while, still. Um, supporting characters. I mean, it's going to be a buddy cop movie in space, which I think is a brilliant idea for this movie. You're going to have Hal Jordan. You're going to have Jon Stewart. I mean, you never know. There could be some Guy Gardner. There could be some... Who knows? If they're, Who else are they going to have in there? I hope they do. Yeah. I hope they have all the supporting characters. I hope that it's a well... Why not just start fucking boom and do little, maybe little callbacks, little flashbacks for the two mains, but just have it started where they're already established. Have the opening scene be just this spectacular intergalactic fucking fight with the lanterns all being with the cores with their core at least with their oh god i'm just totally nerding out right now and having john stewart and hal just doing their fucking thing and then you start you know doing little flashbacks and whatnot and uh, whatever uh majin guku black gaku black um, what were your thoughts on the typical jackasses who only embarrass themselves making Snyder cut April Fool's jokes thinking uh, we would fall for them? Looking at you, Umberto Scoopy Pants number three. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Yeah, he did a stupid one. Uh, Comic Cast also did a video, and they just did, they were full on serious. I got, somebody on my uh, feed was like, hey, did you see this? Oh, my God. And I was like, nope, nope, nope. That's April Fool's joke. Come on. Um, Sam Parker metal one theme broken into a few questions. Uh, when will the MCU end? Will it end? Should it end? Would Disney even allow it to end? (laughs) What would be the greater impact on film in the future? If it never ended, would other movies simply not reach cinemas? Jesus Christ, buddy. God, you have a fucking foil hat on while you're asking all that? Yeah, I don't think it'll ever really end. There'll be just different versions. I don't I don't think it'll be as crazy as it is now. It'll probably relax to just like one every two years, maybe. Or one every year. Um, I don't think yeah, I don't think it'll end. Who knows? It'll probably just keep going. I mean, there's so many stories. I mean, if they decided just to go grittier with it, they're eventually gonna have to do that. Would Disney even allow it in? Of course not. It's one of their biggest properties. Uh, what would be a greater impact on film in the future if it never ended? Would other movies simply not reach cinemas? Yeah, that could be the case. Because you people aren't supporting them! Good God! Stop crying that Hollywood is running out of ideas when movies like Annihilation, some of the most original sci-fi you'll ever fucking see, great, fantastic movie, my favorite movie currently of this year, and it made $11 million domestically. Fuck right off. Anyways, <laughs> Stu Little, he asks, since Marvel aren't uh, using him anymore, do you think there's a role for Ray Stevenson at DC in Ideas What? Put him in New Gods. I mean, I, that's the, obviously because he was in Thor. You know, I forgot what his character's name is. I'm totally drawing a blank, but I know he had a beard and armor and stuff like that. Hey, put him in New Gods. Have him be the High Father. <laughs> They'll probably choose older. I mean, Ray Stevenson's not that old, but why not? That's what I can think of. Everybody's thought, you know, new gods, right? Uh, Matthew, Matt, four, five, zero, four, zero, one, four, zero. Jesus. Do you think Joss will direct or be a part of any future DCU projects? Hashtag until it wasn't. No, of course not. You got the shaft, dude. 
uh, what's his name? The new guy, Hamada. He just said, "Get the fuck out, Ginger Snaps. Get out." Juice, uh, Juice, uh, Giorgio, Gergio. I'm so bad with names. I'm, I'm sorry, Juice. Not a question, but since I stumbled upon your YouTube channel, I've had no need for Scoopy Pants and his site that's turned into all fluff. Great content. Hopefully, Warner Brothers DC. Gets their act together moving forward. Well, thank you, Juice. I appreciate the kind words. You're awesome, and I'm glad you stumbled on it. You know, I'm not trying to be a scoopy pants. I'm not trying to be a scooper or whatnot. I'm just giving my opinions mainly, you know. That's it. I try to be the scooper at one point, and it's just, it's not me. It's not for me. I'm just, I like to talk about this shit. That's all. I don't like to anything else. Whoa, somebody on March 14th. IMDG Tech. You're amazing. You have to be one of my favorite YouTubers and persons. Your philosophies are great, and you're someone who isn't afraid to voice an opinion. I loved what you said about diversity in your newest Oscars uh, film junket podcast. Also adore The Mask and DC and Marvel. <laughs> he likes The Mask. Well, thank you, MDG Tech. I appreciate that. Um, that's what I try to do. I'm more like, you know, and that, you know, there is. I was obsessed. I felt like uh, um, Jake Gyllenhaal and Nightcrawler. Like I needed to be on the scene first. I needed to get this out there first. Oh, I got to be quick and hurry, hurry, get it up there, you know? And I remember walking out of that movie going, wow, you know, you it can be an addiction. It can be something. And, you know, and some of these guys are like that. And then they turn into assholes. They could turn into douchey assholes. But at the same time, they have a fan base themselves themselves so i mean you can't if their fan base is going to keep on growing they're going to keep on being the way they are and i'm sure their fans go like they're a film junkie such a fucking douchebag you know so it's just the way it is and uh you know i just try to be a voice i just voice my opinion i talk about all kinds of shit you know and i, and I love it yeah and we'll see what happens but uh, i try not to be like the, oh, i gotta be first to post you know, I'll post like a short video and then I'll give my opinion on a longer video later. That's just, that's my style. That seems to be what's working because ever since I introduced to just be like, you know, okay, I don't have to be first to anything. I could just, let's just talk. Let's just talk about it. And people just want to hear your opinion on it. And I love that. I love it when you guys send me on Twitter messages like, hey, what's your opinion on this? What's your opinion on that? You know, and I'll, I always try my very best to read all that and like retweet and say like, hey, video's coming. You know, and I, I don't get to all of them, just the way it is. Um, but I try to do that, and I say, like, yeah, I'm going to talk about it when I get home. Man, I'm stuck in my prison, my desk. Ah, it sucks. See what happens with that, though. Um, but, yeah, and that's when I introduced the short videos. I'm like, okay, let me just do, like, a reaction, because I introduced my reaction reviews for movies, and I thought, well, why don't I take that to just reacting to news, since I can't you know, just get right in front of my camera in my little makeshift studio. So that's what the short videos are for. And it seems to be working because my audience keeps growing and I love you guys for it. And I appreciate it, guys. If you want to keep, uh, you know, help with the pirate ship, go, uh, you know, visit the Film Junkie Closet at Teespring. I uh, have shirts in there. Pick yourself up a shirt, you know, and try to make some good, some pretty cool shirts. And then, of course, I got a Patreon as well if you want to donate to that. I would appreciate it. I'm going to do some more live broadcasts, some more live uh, podcasts. I've been talking to people. I'm going to be hitting up some other people. And, you know, I have a nice little lineup lined up for you for, uh, you know, just not just me talking, but, you know, having, you know, a discussion with people like I did a couple times before. It'd be a lot of fun. Anyways, guys, I appreciate you listening in and giving me the questions. And I will talk to you later. To you later. To you later. To you later. See you later.